there, it's Amy D with Amy D Coaching, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, for sale by owners. This is one of my favorite subjects because people ask me all the time, is it worth it? Is it a viable source of business? And to tell you the truth, when I was early on in my career, which was during the recession, for sale by owners was my bread and butter. I didn't know who else to talk to, and so I saw these people was like, oh, you want to sell your house. I can see because you got a for sale by owner sign in the yard. So yeah, A, people have raised their hands saying, I'm a homeowner selling my house. Um, something that most realtors know is that most for sale by owners end up listing with a realtor. So this is a very viable source of business. Now, what most of you don't know is that this isn't something you need to convince them of. I know there's a lot of information out there and a lot of really bad scripts. Um, I'm going to tell you, do not call them and pretend to have a buyer. Do not try to convince them of anything. Just call them and genuinely try to serve them. These are people that have a need. Most of them at some point will need a realtor. And so just be there. Be the one who's there when they do. So here's how this works. First step one is you pick up the phone and call them, introduce yourself, tell them you're a realtor. Hi, I'm Amy Donaldson with XYZ Real Estate Company. I'd love to make an appointment to come see your home. The majority of them will just set the appointment. I know, all of these different classes and, and things that you tell you, oh, don't, I have a buyer or I was looking at, or, or what, no, just I wanna see your house. And the overwhelming majority are like, okay, great, how about, this time and then there's your appointment do not say anything else on the phone the purpose of that phone call is to make the appointment on the rare occasion if they do say well do you have a buyer for my house the best response is you know I don't have anyone specific in mind um, but you know I don't know yet because I haven't seen the home it might actually work you know this is the neighborhood that I work and I'm a realtor so you know you never know that's an honest answer, that you're not ruling it out as a possibility, but no, I don't have anyone specific in mind for your home at this moment, but I'd love to see it, I've got time tomorrow. Most people were just asking that question out of curiosity, not actually as a vetting tool. And the even more rare question that you'll get is someone who goes, oh, well, are you just wanting to list it? And again, to that, I'll say, well, you know, I hadn't actually, gotten that far because I haven't seen the house yet. Um, but I mean, if that's something you're looking for, we can certainly have that conversation. Now, in that case, you've just turned it around on them because they were more asking it as um, like a way to put their wall up, but you've completely disarmed them when you're just like, no, actually, I just wanted to take a look at it. And I, I don't know if it's something that I'd be interested in or if it would be a good fit until I've seen it. Um, but if you'd like to have that conversation, I can definitely come prepared for that. Um, now you've actually made it their idea. And um, usually when you say it, they're like, oh, no, no, I just, you know, I've gotten a lot of calls from realtors and, you know, they kind of backpedal out of it, but they generally set the appointment. Now, if somebody gives any resistance to setting the appointment, I don't push any further because this is usually one that, that's not gonna turn into a listing down the road. Um, so, now that you've set the appointment, you go take a look at the home. When you get there, you wanna be very complimentary of them. You wanna find something to compliment. And then they're gonna show you all over the home, take good notes, and the information that you want, you definitely wanna pay attention to their home because that's what they wanna talk about. So you definitely wanna take the, those sorts of notes. But the most important thing you wanna find out is why they're moving. When the house sells, what are your plans? What, do, what what are you doing? Because that will give you their why. You know, so so if they're moving from this house, they're going to move to a different state because they want to go be near their grandkids. When you follow up with them, you want to help get them close to their grandkids, and the way you want to do that is by selling their house. Everybody else is going to call and talk to the house or talk about the house. You want to be able to talk about their why. Or if one spouse got relocated across the country, you want to help reunite them, you know, oh, to go be with your spouse on the other side of the country um, and do that through selling the house. So you're in a much better position to talk about what's really important to them. Something is driving this move. 
The second thing you want to ask is, how long were you planning to sell on your own before you end up listing with an agent? It's a really good question. And to my surprise, once I started asking this question to people, almost all of them have an answer to that. I, you wouldn't believe how many times I would hear, oh, well, my wife says I can try it for 60 days and then I got to list it with her friend or I can try it with for 30 days and then I got to list it with a realtor. That's really important information. And so what it opened my eyes to is that these people don't need to be convinced. All these statistics that you'll hear out there that, oh, people get more money when they sell with a realtor or all, you don't need to convince people. They already have a game plan. They're gonna try for X number of days and then they're gonna list with a realtor. So just find out what's your timeline? How far into that are we? No, oh, great, how long's it been? Oh, about two weeks. Oh good, now how many realtors do you plan to interview? Um, a lot of people actually have already picked someone out. And here's the thing, I used to be a little bit afraid of that, that oh yeah, my wife's got a friend or um, whatever the case is, until I realized that if they really had a lot of confidence and faith in that person, we wouldn't be having this conversation. They would have just listed with that person. Or at a minimum, if they really wanted to try on their own, they would have already signed a listing agreement that starts 60 days out. So if that hasn't happened, they don't have as much confidence in that person. You know, so this is this is important to remember and for you to have the confidence to go, oh, well, why didn't you just list with them to begin with? and let them share with you their reasons. And then to say, oh, well, you know, and that's great, I understand you already have a relationship with them. Most people interview a couple of realtors. I'd be more than happy to be the second realtor that you interview just so you can compare. And even if we're the same, I understand you'd go with them, but if I'm a lot better, then you know, you've got other options. Most people will be open to that and then show up for that appointment with your listing presentation. Make sure that you've got a really dynamic, wonderful listing presentation. Odds are, when they go to interview the other person, the other person doesn't realize they're being interviewed. They're just gonna show up with a listing contract, unprepared, just wanting to sign the agreement. So it can be very, very easy to get these listings. Um, like I said, this was my bread and butter during the recession. It's how I survived. If you'd like more information and more detailed scripts, sign up for some of my coaching programs. We've got lots of great information at amydcoaching.com.